The inferential goal of Bayesian analysis is to determine the posterior distribution, or sometimes the posterior predictive distribution. Either way, the posterior distribution may not be available in closed form. Because of that, we often want to summarize its properties. And even if we do have a closed form expression for our posterior distribution, we still might want to summarize it in order to get a better intuition about its properties. The easiest way to summarize a posterior distribution, or at least a univariate posterior distribution, is to simply plot it. This is because it retains all the information about the posterior distribution. However, even if you do plot the posterior distribution, you still might not be able to develop an intuition about the important distributional characteristics, such as the mean or the variance. Another approach for summarizing the posterior distribution is to use a set of point estimates. A point estimate is a single value that, in some way, best describes some aspect of the distribution. There are many point estimators popular for summarizing the posterior distribution. You may have noticed that when I started talking about this slide, I used the word estimate, and I just used the word estimator. The difference between an estimator and an estimate is that an estimator is the function that you plug the data into in order to get an estimate. An estimator is actually a random variable, whereas an estimate is a number you get after observing the data. The first estimator we'll talk about is the maximum a posteriori, or MAP estimator. The MAP estimator is a very common choice for summarizing a posterior distribution. The MAP estimator is the value of the parameter that maximizes the posterior distribution. Since we're nearly always working with distributions that are members of the exponential family, it's very common to compute the MAP estimator on the log scale, which often simplifies the process. Note that since the marginal density in the posterior distribution is simply a constant, you can also find the MAP estimator by simply finding the parameter that maximizes the data distribution multiplied by the prior distribution, or on the log scale, the log of the data distribution plus the log of the prior distribution. Other common point estimators of the posterior distribution are the posterior mean, the posterior median, the posterior variance, the posterior standard deviation, or various posterior quantiles. A third approach for summarizing the posterior distribution is using interval estimators. Specifically, in Bayesian statistics, we often use something known as a credible interval or posterior interval which is a range of values that contains the parameter with the specified posterior probability. A central credible interval with level 1 minus alpha is computed such that the area below and above the endpoints of the interval equal alpha over 2. This is also known as an equal-tailed credible interval. A different approach is to construct the highest posterior density interval, or HPD interval. This interval starts at the posterior mode and extends the interval such that the density inside the interval is always at least as large as the density outside it. The interval is extended until its area reaches 1 minus alpha. The central credible interval is simpler and invariant to transformation, but the HPD interval will often be narrower. They can be fairly different if the distribution is skewed. Note that for the HPD interval, you can get disconnected sets if the posterior distribution is multimodal. Bayesian credible intervals differ from frequent confidence intervals in some very important ways. The Bayesian credible interval conditions on the data being fixed and assumes that the parameter is random. The random parameter is in the fixed interval with a specific probability. Another way of thinking about it is that if we draw a value of theta from the posterior distribution, the probability is 1 minus alpha that the sampled value will be in the interval. The frequentist confidence interval conditions on the parameter being fixed and the data being random. If we draw independent samples of data from our population, then the interval produced by the confidence interval procedure will contain the fixed parameter value with probability 1 minus alpha. The intervals are what is changing from sample to sample. Another way of stating the difference between Bayesian credible intervals and frequentist confidence intervals is that after seeing the data, the credible interval contains the parameter with probability 1 minus alpha. The thing that is random in this setting is the parameter theta. The confidence interval will contain the parameter with the specified probability before seeing the data. Once the data is observed, the interval either contains the parameter or it does not. The data are what is random in this setting. Another way to summarize the posterior distribution 
is to draw independent samples from the posterior distribution, which is known as Monte Carlo sampling. Monte Carlo sampling, in general, is a method for drawing independent samples from a distribution. Let theta1 to theta b be IID samples of the parameter from the posterior distribution. The empirical distribution of the Monte Carlo sample will approximate the true posterior distribution, p of theta given y. This is known as the Monte Carlo approximation to the posterior distribution. This approach is most effective when you actually don't know the posterior distribution, or at least it's not in closed form, but you can draw a Monte Carlo sample from the posterior. And yes, that is often possible, as we'll learn in the future. Monte Carlo sampling is very useful in performing something known as Monte Carlo integration. This is a result of the law of large numbers, which essentially says that if you take the average of your Monte Carlo sample, or a function of those values, then your Monte Carlo estimate is going to converge to the true value. Almost surely technically, but you don't need to worry about that. Practically speaking, what this means is that the posterior mean can be estimated by taking the average of a Monte Carlo sample from the posterior distribution. The posterior variance can be estimated by taking the sample variance of a Monte Carlo sample from the posterior. Continuing on, the quantiles of a Monte Carlo sample will converge to the true quantiles of the posterior distribution. Note that these estimates tend to get more accurate as the size of the sample increases.